you did it because you loved me. It's a fine explanation. Certainly, because I loved you. Well, I've had enough. I'm quitting. You can't do that. I, you wouldn't dare do it. You'll find out. I warned you before. You'll regret it. I'll see to that. Threaten all you want. It's murder. That's what it is. There she is, lying dead in the snow. A woman? Certainly a woman. A beautiful woman. And she's dead? Dead. A cold dagger gleaming between her neck and shoulders and a great Siberian wolf crouching over her, ready to devour her. Oh, it's murder, that's what it is, murder in Siberia. And we hear the death rattle gurgle in his throat. It's a cold, wintry night. The snow is falling fast, the wind is howling. Suddenly out of the darkness comes a... Comes that's a... no good, Mick. Huh? Now, why not about that idea I had of murdering that guy in Africa? No, no, now where were we? Where Still were we? Still on page we? one. Go ahead, Nick. You were doing swell. Siberia, a beautiful woman, murder. Murder. Well, well, I'm going to warn you fellas, right now there'll be a murder around here unless somebody gets an idea before very long. You mean Mr. Atherton's going to be mad? No, no, Horace. Nick don't mean that. Mr. Atherton is a big-hearted gentleman that likes to give money away. That's why he advanced us $500 to write him a play about a murder mystery. And now he wants his play. Yes, but we haven't thought one up yet. We know that. All three of us know that. That's what we're trying to do now, Horace. We're trying to think one up. Well, suppose we can't think one up. Then Mr. Atherton will want his money back. And we've already eaten it up. And you don't think Mr. Atherton's going to be mad? Oh, not much. He'll just boil you in oil. All right, all right. Page one. Oh, I still got that down. Oh, whether it's Siberia or Africa or Asia, we've got to murder somebody. Mm. I'm through and I'm going. Again, I tell you, you'll regret it. If you think I'm going to let you walk out on me after giving you all that money, you're mistaken. It's gone, lost. Is it my fault if the investment went wrong? Investment? You stole it. That's what you did. Go on, get out of the way. I'm sick of the whole thing. Goodbye and good luck. We'll talk to a baby. It's just me, Mrs. Duvall. Oh, come in, Ambrosia. I was just going down the hall, and I thought I'd stop and see if there was anything I could do. Uh, yes. Yes, there is. I'm going to take a little trip. You can help me pack. Will you get my suitcase? Yes, ma'am. You going to be gone long? No. No, just a few days. I'm going to White Plains. Stay with me. Do you want all these dresses in the bag? Oh, yes, Ambrosia. Is Mrs. Duval going too? No, no, I'm going alone. I'll leave Toto to take care of Mr. Duval. Well, how about a kitty car? Stage coaches, covered wagons, caravans. Well, look who's here, a wolf. Hiya, boy. Well, it's not, not in here. Shoo, get out. Where is Toto? Toto. Oh. Toto. Toto, where are you? I beg your pardon. Who well, don't mention it? Hello, Horace. Hello. Toto, you naughty baby running away from your mommy. Won't you sit down? Oh, I wouldn't dare. You busy authors, talking about murders all day long. Must be wonderful. Yeah, that's us. Wonderful. Won't you please? Some other time. I have to pack now. I'm going to White Plains. Say au revoir to the gentleman. Yeah, that's it. Now throw a nice kiss to the big gentleman. <laughs> au revoir. Goodbye. Come back again sometime. Why not? Uh, lock it. She's liable to decide not to go to White Plains. Friend of yours, Horace? Her name is Suzanne Duvall. She's the wife of that Frenchman that lives across the hall. Well, pardon me. Oh, a beautiful woman. A smart woman. Did you see the way she looked at me? <laughs> well, how'd you like to wake up and find that in your Christmas stocking? Christmas. Christmas. Say, there's an idea. How about this? The murder of Santa Claus. Are you being funny, Nick? No, I mean in a department store. Here, pull that out. Get a fresh sheet. Page one. New heading.
It's in the Congo. I see the heat waves rising from the jungle. I've been bitten by a tsetse fly, and as I grope my way to the river's edge, I hear the tom-toms of the natives. Boom, 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 boom. I got it. Murder by swing music. Now, where were we? Where were we? In the Congo. Let's try the alphabet again. Oh, we did that. We were down to Z, murder in a zoo, murder by a Zulu, murder with a Zillaphone. Oh. Nick! What's the matter? On my rug! Not on my rug! Oh, will you forget about that moth-eaten carpet for a while? How can I concentrate? It requires precisely the same effort to drop them in the ashtray as on the rug. Look, Horace, will you do me a favor? Let's work in my apartment, huh? We were kicked out of your apartment. You know I can't write except in the atmosphere of my own home. Then write in your own home. Here, stick that in and put down page one. Our favorite page. Yeah, and write as I dictate. You got something? Yes. You ready, Horace? Yeah. Mr. John Atherton, President. Atherton Productions Incorporated. My dear Mr. Atherton, we have no play and have already spent the $500. What do we do now? Or rather, what do you do now? Don't answer it. At least it's a change from writing page one. Mr. Atherton. Uh, come in, Mr. Atherton. Well, Horace. Hello. How do you do, Mr. Atherton? Well, how are you, Mr. Atherton? Well, where's my play? I can't wait forever, you know. We've got to get into rehearsal. Sure, well, uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Atherton? Where is it? How are you getting on? Oh, swell, Mr. Atherton, you'd be surprised. Uh, uh, that's something. <laughs> Even if I did have to come clear across town to hear it. I'm glad you did, Mr. Atherton. We were just talking about you. You're not, uh, you're not worried. Oh, no, no, indeed. You've been paid your advance. I always get what I pay for. Yes, yeah, won't you have a cigarette, Mr. Uh, Atherton? Have a cigar, Mr. Atherton. How about a little drink? No, thanks. I never drink when I'm reading a play script. Best keep your head clear at such moments. Oh. Supposing you let me glance at it. Oh, I, uh, yes, Nick. Uh, let him glance at it. <coughs> Well, you see, we couldn't do that. It's not quite the shape. Uh, uh, not quite. Only the first draft, you see. Don't let that bother you. I've read hundreds of first drafts. But you couldn't read this one. Why not? Well, you see, it's still in longhand. It's too uh, bulky. Of course, we could tell it to you, but... Uh... Capital idea. Uh, you tell him, babe. It's a great first act, Mr. Atherton. Great effects. Wind machines, weird lights, swirling snow and howling wolves. A drosky wallowing through the drifts. It's stuck. A beautiful woman with a cloak of sable slipping from her marble shoulders leaps from the drosky and takes a few tottering, feeble steps. Striding in pursuit, I see a man a man, a small, hard man. Uh-huh. He plunges a jewel dagger into her quivering flesh, and with a wailing cry, she falls. And the wolves howl. Oh! 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 Go on. I'm listening. Well, you see, it's a blackout. That's the first scene. It's a mystery. Uh, uh, you take it on from there, Nick. Uh, Twenty years have passed. The burning sands of the desert surround us. Palm trees wave in the still blue air. A beautiful girl stands at the door of her father's tent. With her own hands, she is combing the mane of a stately white camel. Very unusual and uh, different. Suddenly, there is an ominous whir of wings. Oh, you see, we call it Wings of Doom. Uh, nice title, huh? Go on. A glittering dark plane swoops low. A shot rings out, and the camel falls. A bullet in his hump. Oh, you take it on from there, horse. I get so excited. Thirty years have passed. That's fifty years already. 
Do you think the audience will live long enough to see it through? Well, we could make it 20. 20 years is what you should get, you, you swindlers. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Atherton. One week from today, we start rehearsals. And what have you got? Trotsky's, ridiculous. Camels, utter nonsense. Well, don't be sore, you'll have your play. I've had enough. Just give me back my $500 and the deal's off. Uh, no, we couldn't do that. No, you see, our reputation's at stake. You mean, of course, you've spent the money, my money. Well, I'll come back tonight, after the theater, and see that you have an idea for me. At least an idea, or you'll be writing in jail. You and your dross kicks, rubbish. Authors, ha! Page one. Oh. Hello, Ambrosia. Are the boys home? Sure is, Mr. Officer Harrigan. Sure is. Got your uniform all ready for you. All pressed and shiny. I cleaned the buttons up with a little tooth powder. How about that little patch on the pants? I'll fix that, too. Yes, sir. You can't even tell that suit was ever slept in before. <laughs> Fine for you, Ambrosia. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you. I hung your uniform up in Mr. Officer's clothes like you told me to. I was afraid of that. It's that woman again. Oh, go on, babe. She probably wants to talk to you. Oh, hello, Chief. Hello, babe. Hiya, boys. Hello, Tim. Oh, I've been drinking your lunch again. It's a wonder you wouldn't invite a poor called policeman in from time to time just to be sociable. We don't have to. You always come anyway. Oh, Ambrosia tells me that uh, she's taken the liberty of hanging my uniform in your closet. You don't mind, do you? Why don't you quit smoking a pipe? Your uniform smells like burning rubber. All right, Horace. Uh, I'd pick it up later on tonight when I'm off duty. Got to have it for inspection in the morning. Uh, well, <clears throat> so long, boys. So long. Page one. Page one again. Why don't you stop drinking that stuff and give yourself a chance to think? Somewhere in this world there's a new murder plot and we're going to find it if we have to try every country on the map. Say, that stuff I was telling Atherton about the white camel wasn't so bad. How about it? Murder on a camel. No. And I say yes. Come on, make yourself useful. Be a camel. I've never been a camel. That's all right. Just hump your back a little bit more. There, now hold it. Murder by a camel. Not exactly. Uh, murder of a camel. Boy, I think you got something there. Now look down here. What is, what is there in my, my apartment? Uh, good evening, Mr. Duvall. You seem to have accidentally gotten into the wrong apartment. Yours is right across the hall. Now, if you'll go over there, everything will be all right. Certainly. Excuse me. Say, we better knock his teeth out or something and get rid of him. You're going the wrong way. Not in there, that's my bathroom. Hey, babe, get him out of there. He's got your bottle of inspiration. Now he's locked himself in. Fine friends you have, Horace. That's our last full quart. You mean my last full quart? Well, what are we going to do about it? You know I can't write without inspiration. You can't write with it. So that's the little Frenchman from across the hall, eh? Do you mean that that's the husband of that beautiful piece of femininity that was any other this afternoon? The one who was so interested in me? So interested in you that she left town immediately. Oh, there is no justice. He lost no time getting on a toot after his wife left town. He certainly is plastered. There's an idea. Murder by alcohol. Yeah. Going on for thousands of years and you just discovered it. Oh, this is really too much. My bathroom, my whiskey. Oh, forget it, Horace. Oh. Let him sleep it off in there. Oh, of course, it's nothing to you. It's nothing to either of you. It's not your bathroom, not your whiskey. Your bathroom, your rug, your whiskey. Why not your ideas once in a while, just for a change? I don't see where your ideas have gotten us any place. Camels with white flowing manes and bullets in their humps. Oh, I could have been very fond of that camel. Well, I'm very fond of this apartment. All right, let's call it quits. I was born with two strikes on me, and you're both of them. I'm through. Washed up. I quit. Oh! I tried to be patient. Thirty years have passed. Oh, my rug! <laughs> oh, I've tried to understand your temperaments. I've overlooked your obnoxious personal habits and your profanity. But a man can only stand so much! No more. Hey, 
Hey, you're going the wrong way, Mr. Duvall. That door leads out onto the terrace. You want to go that way. Oh, not on my rug. Not on my rug. Oh, you'll pay for this. You'll pay for this. Hey. Hey. Jet, oh man, I'm holding in my hands about, about $15,000. There's something funny here. No honest man goes around with $15,000 in his pocket. No such thing. Mr. Duvall is my neighbor. Say, how do you say Santa Claus in French? Santa Claus, nothing. I'll bet my shirt that guy's a crook. What are you two fellas thinking about? Suppose Mr. Duvall should wake up and find his money gone. He'll think I stole it. This is my apartment. The police will come in and trample all over my rug. Maybe he's a big shot gambler. Or a bank robber. He might be almost anything. Now you got me worried. I'm gonna look him over and see if he's got a gun. Now we'd better keep these, but I'll have to put him to bed later. But I like this, I'll have anything on him. Gold of Ophir, or musk and sandalwood from the far shores of Cafe. You and your big shot gambler, my foot. Why, this little rummy's just like all the rest of them. His wife goes out of town on a visit, he gets out the little black book with the phone numbers. There's something funny here. This book's got the names and private telephone numbers of some of the most prominent men in town. And listen to this. October 12th, saw RM today, came through nicely. More later. What's that? And then this one. November 15th, W.U. yelled his head off. We'll pay more in two weeks. What are you getting at, Nick? Blackmail. Well, it might be a good guess at that. Help me get him out of here. I don't want him in my apartment. Come on, help me carry him across the hall. No, stop, stop. I got it, I got it. Now, I listen, got Nick, just don't get started on camels and wolves again. Somewhere along the line, the names in this book tie up with the money in Duval's pocket. They're big names and it's big money, don't you see? Tell me more. Well, we'll call up the names in this book. We'll make them come over here. When they get here, we'll show him Duvall. We'll accuse him of murdering him. He looks dead, doesn't he? Dead drunk. All right, then he isn't dead, but he's dying. He's in a coma. Now, one of these suspects will crack up, and when he does, we've got the story for our play. Oh, don't be silly. They're not gonna walk in here and give themselves away. They won't talk. What do you mean, they won't talk? We'll make them talk. Dead men, big people, scared stiff, and the police standing right here to work on them? The police? What police? That's where we come in. We're going to be the police. Hard-boiled coppers, that's us. You mean we're going to impersonate police officers? Yeah. I'm Inspector Milburn. You, babe, you're going to be one of my officers. And you, you're Dr. Dryden, a police surgeon. Oh, you can't do that to me. Let's see here. Underhill, Mallory, Brooks. Well, come on over and make yourself useful. Hey, you can't get along without the mastermind. Uh, Butterfield 82598. Now, which one is first? Randolph Brooks. Now, wait a minute, fellas, before it's too late. Now, Horace. Hello? Yes, this is he. Who? Inspector Milburn, police department. It will be necessary for you to come at once. Duval is dying and insists on making a statement, but refuses to do so except in your presence. I'm sorry, but I'll have to insist. Police regulations, you know. All right, Inspector. I'll be right over. Well, boys, you can rest assured that Brooks will be number one. I'm telling you this thing's gonna work. Well, now, who's next? Let's try this one. <whistles> William Underhill. Ladies' underwear. Well, that's that old goat, Uncle Undy. You know, his picture's in the paper all the time. I warn you, I'll have no part of this disgraceful business. Intimidating decent people. The Horace, decent people wouldn't have their name in this man's notebook. Let me see. Bryant 91781. Just a touch more of embroidery, Mr. DeForest. Just a touch more. A little spray, delicate, climbing right up the seam. And the least bit snugger. Just the least bit snugger. That's right. Excuse me, Mr. Underhill. Huh? Oh, all right, I'll take it. Hello? Talking. Duval? Yes, I seem to remember the name. Yes, you're in quite a jam, Mr. Underhill. Duval is dying and he's made a statement regarding you. Yeah. Now, we may have to hold you for murder. So you better get over here right away and don't waste any time fixing up an alibi, understand? 
Uh, just ask for Inspector Milburn. Get out of here. All right. Out you go. All right. Uh, madam, come. Let's see, what's next? Why don't you try that Mallory number? Robert Mallory? Sure, the jeweler. Oh, this is getting better fast. Maybe it's Mr. Brooks. Better cover Duval with that screen. He mustn't see him till we're ready. Well, I've changed my mind. Changed your mind about what? That hospitality we talked about. Oh, so the officer wants to play, huh? Sure, it's colder outside than an iron dog. You can't blame me for wanting to come in here and get the icicles out of my throat. Now, see here, Tim, there are more important things in life than hospitality. We're thinking. That's fine. You think and I'll drink. We'll both be happy. Now, wait a minute. I've got an idea. You can be of some help to me. What have you been doing? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Well, we're writing a mystery play. It's called Murder in a Police Station, and that's where you come in. Not me. I've done everything in a police station but murder. I'm afraid I can't do anything for you. Oh, yes, you can. Now, we need details. You know, the happy life of the prisoners behind the bars. Huh? Now, you go on out in your beat and think of all the funny things you ever saw happen in a police station. Then you come in and tell them to me. You mean you want me to help you write the play? Well, not exactly, but it's something like that. You could that. go much farther and do much worse. My grandfather wrote for the police gazette in his time. And the gift of language flows through any man named Harrigan. I'll be after reporting to you later, Chief. Oh, so long. So long. <clears throat> now you've done it. Four authors of one of them, a policeman. Where's my little... Now listen, Nick, I'm not gonna Quiet. say... Quiet. Oh. Robert Mallory? But, Dad, surely you're a lawyer. There must be some protection from this sort of thing. There is no protection against blackmail. I should have taken my stand long ago. Let Duval tell everything he knows. But now, it's too late. Then the only thing to do is to pay him and get it over with. That's what I thought, my dear. But it's not over. That's why I wanted to talk to you now. For one year, I've been paying Duval. Tonight, I gave him $15,000. It was everything I had left. Don't worry. There must be some way out. There's only one way out with a blackmailer. Shh, Dad. Go to bed. We'll talk it over in the morning. Hello. I'm sorry, Mr. Mallory Zillin can't come to the phone. This is Kay Mallory, his daughter. Police? Mr. Duval is dying? My father's very ill, Inspector Milburn. Can't this wait until tomorrow? All right, then. I'll have him come at once. Okay. Yeah, so you won't talk, eh? Well, I finally got a uniform and brass buttons. I can't find anything that looks like a doctor's case. How do I look? You better not let Harrigan see you in that. Never mind about Harrigan. Well, Inspector, Officer Lawton reporting for duty. You look swell, Pave. Nick, I can't be a doctor. I don't even know any of the words. Oh, give them double talk or pig Latin. They don't know the difference. Besides, this is the only bottle of medicine in the house. Well, you only need one bottle. You got only one sick man. What is it? Aromatic spirits of ammonia. Spirits? Yeah. That might be all right. Let me have a snort. Come on now, boys. Let's be serious. Put that bottle where you can get it, horse. And you better pick your clothes up, babe. Yeah, so you won't talk, eh? Answer the door, officer. <clears throat> Evening. Apartment 2A? Right. 
Inspector Milburn. I'm Inspector Milburn. You're Randolph Brooks, I presume. That's right. Oh, come in. I want you to meet Dr. Dryden of the police department. Good evening, Dr. Dryden. Good evening. And now, Mr. Brooks. Uh, Dr. Brooks, Inspector. Oh, yes, uh, Dr. Brooks. Well, sit down, Doctor. Thank you. I suppose you know why you're here. Not exactly. Of course, I'm uh, always ready to place myself at the service of the police department. What can I do for you? Plenty. Your friend Duval is over behind that screen. And Dr. Dryden informs me that he's in a critical condition. He was picked up on the street and brought in here, and he wants to make a statement. Probably his last statement. And Duval had enemies. One of them is responsible for his condition. What is there between you and Pierre Duval? Oh, so you won't talk, eh? Certainly I'll talk, Inspector. Only your manner is just a little confusing. You see, I'm Duval's physician. And I think you may be unduly alarmed. Duval, I must tell you, is subject to periodical attacks of drunkenness. Often he passes out completely. Of course, as you know, Doctor, the absorption of alcohol in the blood is much slower in some cases. Duval is a hypothyroid. If you'll permit me, Dr. Dryden, I'll examine him and... Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Brooks, but we can't let you see him yet. You see, for the moment, we're accepting Dr. Dryden's diagnosis. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, miss, but you probably got the wrong apartment. Are you Inspector Milburn? Why, yes, I'm Inspector Milburn. I'm Kay Mallory. Oh, Kay Mallory. Well, what are you doing here? You phoned my father. Well, where is he? Why didn't he come? He's really too ill. I thought it was important, so I came instead. All right, come in. Good evening, Miss Mallory. Hello, Doctor. And don't be alarmed. These gentlemen from the police department are just conducting a little investigation. Uh, and how's Doris? Very happy, I suppose? Yes, yes, indeed. We're both very happy. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is this Doris? My fiancé, a friend of Miss Mallory's. Well, we can dispense with social affairs for the moment. Oh, officer, will you show Dr. Brooks into the kitchen? You won't mind waiting a few minutes, will you? I suppose not. Excuse me. Right in there, Doctor. I'm sorry you came, Miss Mallory. Our business is really with your father. You see, there's a secret between your father and a man named Duval. It's a matter of life and death. Duval is dying and he's going to make a statement, but he wants your father here. Why didn't he come? He's very sick. He's in bed. I'm quite familiar with my father's affairs. I'll gladly give you all the information I can. All right. Is it true that your father gave $15,000 to Duval this evening? I've told you my father's sick in bed. Well, Duval has $15,000 in his overcoat pocket. Did you give it to him? Certainly not. I'm going to give you one last chance, Miss Mallory. In a few moments, Dr. Dryden's going to revive Duval, and Duval will tell. Now will you talk? I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to wait for just a little bit. Doctor, is there a room where Miss Mallory can stay for a few moments? Uh, oh, oh, yes, indeed, Miss Mallory. The bedroom. A beautiful rug on the floor. Chinese. Ming Dynasty. And never mind about your ancestors, Doctor. Just show her in. So we'll have to either let him in and buy a horse or a new door. Listen, Nick. That Kay Mallory's a nice girl. Well, who said she wasn't? Well, you can't do this sort of thing to nice people. Oh, relax. But this is my apartment. I'm Underhill. This is an outrage, understand? An outrage, and I'll not stand for it. Stand for what? Dragging me over here. I've consulted my lawyer, and he says it's not legal. You can't drag me over here. Well, who dragged you over here? Huh? You dragged yourself over here, Mr. Underhill, you and your guilty conscience. I'm not going to talk to you. My attorney told me not to talk to you. Quiet, we're on the air. Sit down. Hmm. Now, listen to me, Underhill. Duval is over behind that screen, and he's dying. Do you understand? Dying. Who? Pierre Duval. I never heard of him. Don't lie to me. I don't know him, I tell you. I never heard of him. I'm going to give you your last chance to come clean, Underhill. What is the mystery between you and Pierre Duval? Oh, so you won't talk, eh? Of course I won't talk. I'm going to get out of here. Just a minute. Officer Lawton, show Mr. Underhill into one of the rooms until we've had a chance to revive Duval. It'll only take a moment, and then we'll have your story from Duval's own lips. Come on. Huh? Come on. 
<clears throat> right in here. This has gone far enough. You've got to let those people go. Well, this is my apartment and they'll blame me. We'll all be arrested for impersonating the police. Now listen, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to prove it on you. Now, you double-barreled idiot, will you quit screaming your head off? I tell you, we got them scared to death, haven't we, babe? Listen, Horace, we can't quit now. Besides, the way these people are acting, there's bound to be a story here. But you don't understand my position. Now, Doctor, we're going in there, and you're going to revive Duvall. But I'm not a doctor. I can't revive Duvall. That babe girl, he knows all about drugs. <laughs> All you have to do is hold that bottle of ammonia under his nose. First he'll sneeze a couple of times, then he'll want a drink. Then he'll talk his head off. It's in the bag. Daniel? He's dead, I tell you. He's dead. Dead? <laughs> you mean you'd like to see him dead? I tell you, he's dead. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to have something to tell us before he dies, and I'm sure it'll be very interesting. Not only interesting, but colossal. Let me out of here. Wait a minute. Oh, calm down. Dr. Dryden is going to administer a Brigham 2 powder, and then Duval will finish what he started to tell us before he collapsed. What happened, Inspector? Tell me, please. You'll find out. Dr. Brooks, what are you doing in there? The gentleman is right. What do you mean? Duval is dead. What did you do to him? I'm holding you responsible. He is hardly responsible. In my opinion, Duval has died of alcoholic poisoning. And if there's any responsibility, Inspector, I'm afraid it rests on your shoulders. This man should have had medical attention long ago. I suggest that your Dr. Dryden make an examination. I think he'll agree with me. Very good. <coughs> Inspector, I think it'd be well for me to guard the body behind the screen. <coughs> Hello, Chief. I'm back. And it's Tim Harrigan's got some news for you, some clues. No, not here, Tim. This information's just between you and me. What do you got? Get an order this. It's brand new. A boy meets a girl. Yeah? What about it? They meet in a police station. They've both been arrested for murder. Big romantic stuff. You're doing fine, Tim. There's more to it. Yeah, but not here. You better come back later. If they hear you inside, they'll steal your plot. Huh? The dirty crooks. Inspector, in view of the fact that Duval is dead, have you any further use for our presence here? I think you'll agree with me that Duval isn't going to make any statement. I'll get a taxi for him. Wait a minute! Don't anybody leave this room. Duval's been murdered. Murdered? What? Stabbed! Lock the door. Now, I'm not getting anywhere. Somebody's lying. We all under arrest until I find out the truth. There's six of us in this room, and one's guilty. Now, Officer Lawton, Dr. Dryden, and myself were out in the hallway talking. And that eliminates us. Dr. Brooks was in the kitchen. Miss Mallory was in the bedroom. And you, you were in the bathroom. I want to talk to my lawyer. Oh, get away from that phone. I have constitutional rights. You'll have a couple of rights to the chin in a minute. You killed Duval and then let out a yell that you found him dead. That's a lie. Then what were you doing in here? Well, I... You uh, sneaked in here when no one was looking and killed him. The man was dead when I saw him. Do you think I'd be so foolish as to go... I know what you did. You climbed out the bathroom window under the terrace. What terrace? You know what terrace. Right outside there. I don't know anything about this house. I've never been in it in my life. And you came in through those French doors, killed him, and went back. Then you came around this way and discovered the body. Very smart. 
But not smart enough to fool the department. You crept in here silent as a shadow and plunged this? Say, what is this thing he was killed with? Well, if you ask me, it looks like... It looks like a surgical instrument. A surgical instrument? Just what sort? How do I know? Well, perhaps Dr. Dryden can tell us. Why, uh, that's, uh, uh... Ever seen one like this before? Why, no, that is, uh, not exactly. No, nor have I. Looks to me more like a knitting needle. Oh, why, yes, now that you've mentioned, I, I remember my Aunt Henrietta. Well, skip your Aunt Henrietta. Officer, a little courtesy, please. You know, you could have gotten out onto that terrace, too. In fact, any of you could. These rooms all have windows leading onto the terrace, don't they, Horace? Uh, I'm sure I don't know, Inspector. Uh, well, that's right, you don't. Well, I think they all... Uh... You're right, Inspector. All the windows open onto this terrace. I've investigated thoroughly. Nice work, Lawton. May I say a word, Inspector? Yes, go ahead. If you assume that the murderer came from the terrace, why do you also assume that one of us did it? Why couldn't someone else have come in from the outside and committed the crime? Maybe Mrs. Duvall. No, she's in White Plains. How do you know? What's the matter, Miss Mallory? Nothing. I just feel a little faint. Well, I'll get you some water. Go with him, officer. No one's going to escape until this thing is cleared up. Come in. Excuse me, mister. Oh! Good evening, Mr. Underhill. You know that man? Indeed I do. Why, Mr. Underhill owns this whole building. Why, yes. Yes, my real estate agents handle it. Have you seen him here before? Yes, sir. He visits here plenty, right in this floor. Is there something the matter? Because if there is, I can gondificate Mr. Underhill. Uh, thank you very much. I'll come up to ask Mr. Oh, that's all right. Now, you go on downstairs, and I'll see you later. Don't leave the building. Yes, sir. So you're the man who owns this building. You've been hiding behind a firm of real estate agents. Well, I'd like to tell you something about the rents that you charge. Doctor, I'm conducting this investigation. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. So you lied to us. Never been here before. Didn't know about the terrace, eh? I insist on talking to my lawyer. You'll talk to us. I have nothing more to say. We've got ways of making fellas like you talk. Well, what do you mean? Oh, I'll just have a couple of the boys give you a going over, a little massage. Do you know what it feels like to have your Adam's apple smashed to a pulp? What, are you going to talk? Well, what do you want to know? I didn't kill the man. Why are you always picking on me? What about the others? Maybe she did it. I'm uh, going to turn rat and blame it on a woman, eh? Well, maybe the doctor is right. Maybe somebody did come in and kill Duval. Yeah, who? Well, what about her father? We mentioned that before. He had plenty reason to do it. Miss Mallory says he's too sick to leave the house. How do you know he is? We'll soon find out. Babe, uh, officer, call that Mallory number. Here. Plaza 32590. I'd like to talk to Mr. Mallory, please. He did? When? Just a few minutes after Miss Kay went out. Thank you. Well, your father made a remarkable recovery. What did he say? Nothing. He left the house immediately after you did. There must be some mistake. Yes, there's a big mistake around here someplace. Inspector, I've got an idea. What is it? If I can be alone in this apartment for five minutes, I think I can crack this thing. It's a bit unusual, but... All right, officer, I'll give you your chance. All right, everybody across the hall. Doctor, take Underhill. Lawton, there's a promotion in it for you if you make good. Thank you. Over there, gentlemen. Say, uh, take Underhill and Brooks in the next room for a few minutes. I want to talk to Miss Mallory. She looks worried about something. Well, who do you think did it, Nick? Oh, anyone could have done it, and undoubtedly all have wanted to. Well, you don't mean me, do you? You're the best judge of that. If you don't mind, gentlemen, we'll go in the bedroom. But I do mind. Huh? I don't want to go in the bedroom. Come on, Underhill. Don't start getting silly at this stage of the game. It'll only take the officers a few more minutes to discover the murderer. Yeah, but they've been acting very strangely about me. And the worst that can happen is a trial in a criminal court. That is, unless you actually committed the murder, in which case... What? Nothing. What? 
Well, in such cases, they usually hang you or electrocute you or something of a similar nature. I've got to get out of here. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 just a minute. Uh, uh, right here, right in the bedroom. Uh, yes, sir, the inspector wants you to come right in here. I'm worried. This has all come about so suddenly, I don't know what to do or just what to say. Oh, now, now, Miss Mallory, please take my advice and do nothing or say nothing for the present. Just leave it to me and I'll take care of it. Or we'll have the man who did this killing in no time, then you can go home. In fact, I'll take you home myself. You see, Doctor, the theory, of course, is that a drop of distilled water injected into the nerve ganglia behind the ear will prevent the spasm of angina pectoris. The subject's really a hobby of mine. I'd, I'd like your opinion. Uh, well, you see, Doctor, police surgeons aren't allowed to talk about such things. Uh, it's against the rules. Is he badly hurt? No, he looks like it. Dr. Brooks! I'll sue you for this! What happened? Some farm. Yes. Where's Dr. Brooks? Where you been? I must have been knocked out. I had a struggle with a man in the dark. Who was it? I don't know. There wasn't anybody here, because I pushed out my hand to defend myself, and the man had a moustache. Oh, Nick. Yeah, baby. Nick, it's important. Uh, oh. Officer Lawton's been hurt. See what you can do for him, will you? Babe, what is it, babe? Now he's wasting that all on his head. Here, babe. Drink it, kid. Nick. Nick. What is it? Look at the body. Take a look at it. What? Oh. What's well, gone? Babe, what happened? Who was in here? Who hit you? Babe. Inspector. What do you want? May I talk to you? In a minute. Babe. No, no, please. It's important. It's something I think you should know. If Miss Mallory has some information to offer, I think you should listen to her. Well, what is it? Not here. I don't want anyone else to know. Will he be all right? Yes. Nothing serious. All right. Well, come on. Oh, well, I forgot about the switch. Somebody must have pulled it when he tried to make an escape. Right here. Just a minute. Doc is the inside of a black dog. There. Now, just sit down, Miss Mallory. And if... Perhaps when you tell me this, if you think of me as a friend rather than a police officer, it'll make it easier. It's about my father. You'd find it out anyway, and I'd rather you heard it from me. It's so hard to tell you. Well, let me say it for you. Your father became acquainted with the Duvals. Mr. Duval blackmailed him for every cent he had, threatened to ruin him with notoriety if he didn't pay. Isn't that it? 
And it's the same story with Underhill and all the others. But that's not so important now. A man's been murdered here. Everyone's in a jam until we find the murderer. Did your father kill Duvall? No, he didn't. That's Mr. Duvall. Come on, officer, tell us who hit you. Did you recognize him? Anyone you knew? I'll talk to nobody but Inspector Milburn. After all, you know, us officers have got to hang together. You fellows can hang separately. Nick. Nick. Here's the switch. Oh, babe, I found the body. Where? Right in here. It's in the piano. Somebody brought DeVal's body in here. You mean Mrs. DeVal? No, Mr. DeVal. That's what I was trying to tell you in the room across the hall. There is no Mr. DeVal. Hey, what's the matter? Are your nerves playing tricks on you? Look. Well, it looks like Mrs. DeVal made a specialty of dressing up like a man. Well, what do you make of it? Well, it's apparent that the little lady had a lot of fun out of posing as her own husband. As Mrs. Duvall, she built up quite a circle of friends. And the chances are, as her cash would get low, she'd dress herself up as a man and go out and do a little collecting. When did you find this out? Just a few minutes ago in the room across the hall when I detected her wig coming loose. It doesn't seem possible. Well, you haven't been around a whole lot. It's been done before. But Mrs. Duvall had the act down pretty good. She fooled me. I still don't get it. As Ms. Duvall, she'd strike up a flirtation with a man, play around with him for a bit. Then some fine day, she'd get herself all done up in her collecting clothes and go out and play the part of the outraged husband. The victim would get scared to death, pass over the money. So that's where the $15,000 comes in. Sure. I wonder who brought her and put her in here. Well, I don't know that, but to say she didn't walk. Here's what she was killed with. Yeah, that's the weapon that was in the body across the hall. See if this fits. It fits. Old fashioned ice pick. Do you suppose it belongs to Horace? Horace has an electric ice box. Well, this is one murder mystery we better solve and be quick about it. Yes, this is getting me quite a mess, and we're sitting right in the middle of it. Back off that! Help! Police! Murder! Back go of that, I tell you! Send the police over, there's been a murder! We ain't got enough police here now, what do you want, the whole force? Did he get him? Yeah, but he didn't get a chance to give him our address. Good, they'll trace the call, but it'll give us more time. Trace the murder call. Time, 1028. Report to police headquarters. Hurry it. Don't worry, they'll be right over. Sit down. These men are fakes, they're not policemen at all. What? Sit down. Oh, we're not police, eh? What do you think we are? Gangsters, murderers, that's what you are. I'll find out. Doctor, where did you go to school? Uh, why, uh... uh uh, that's none of your business. Well, I'm sure the doctor has no objections to answering. Where was it, doctor? Well, uh, Oshkosh High School. I thought so, you faker. I told you we couldn't get away with it. So, Mr. Underhill is right. You're not police officers. It doesn't make any difference what we are. There's been a murder committed. In my apartment. Quiet. There's been a murder committed, and we're going to find out who did it. Exactly, we're going to find out who did it. But let me point out that none of you three is above suspicion. You've been impersonating police. For what reason, I don't know. Well, I do. They're murderers. Thugs. We are not. We're authors. We were writing a play. That's your story. But for all we know, Duval may have been murdered before we got here. Sure, the police will be interested in that idea. I suppose maybe we are considered guilty until we're proven innocent. Let's start right here now. When did you last see Mrs. Duvall? Don't answer any questions until the police arrive. Just a minute, Brooks. We're handling this. Why don't I mind you, Mr. Milburn, that you're no longer a police inspector. Ah, here they are now. Come in! Come in! Milburn, what's all this shouting and yelling going on here? Shh, we're rehearsing. You mean play actor? Murder! Police! Sit down. My goodness, sounds terrible. Now, never mind what it sounds like. 
Ambrosia, I want to talk to you. Wait a minute, babe. I'll be back, and you keep me here if you have to slug him. Just a minute, Mr. Nick. Miss Duval sure gonna raise Cain with somebody when she comes home and finds her apartment all mussed up. Whew! Because when that lady gets mad, she sure can go to town. <clears throat> so you think she's got a bad temper? I know she got a bad temper. She's gonna bust somebody wide open for this. Something mighty funny going on around this place. Everybody acting like a lot of lunatics. You know, Ambrosia, I've been thinking the same thing. Supposing you tell me what makes you suspicious. Well, in the first place, Never mind, it ain't none of your business what makes me suspicious. Ah, oh, Ambrosia, just missed the chance of a lifetime. What kind of a chance? Becoming a great actress? Can't you just see your name up there in the bright lights over the theater? Ambrosia. Ambrosia. You go on clean nutty like the rest of them. Oh, not as nutty as you think. You know, we're writing a play over in the next apartment. It's a murder mystery, and there's a great part in it for you. Now, you always said you wanted to act. Let's see if you can. Go ahead, Mr. Nick. Am I the murderer or the murderee? No, no, you're, you're a witness. In fact, you're the chief witness for the prosecution. And I'm, uh, I'm a young prosecuting attorney, and I hope to prove my case by your testimony. What have I got to say? Oh, we haven't written a dialogue yet. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's pretend it's about the Duvals. Go ahead, Mr. Nick. I'll red hot. <laughs> young lady, take the witness stand. Yes, sir. Now! Oh, come on, come on, let's, let's forget about this thing. Let's all go home. You see, there's, there's no dead body here, so then, of course, there couldn't have been a murder. Simple, isn't it, huh? Look here, I've kept out of this so far because it was really none of my business. But I've got some ideas about this murder, and with your permission, I'd just like to ask a few questions. Now, I think we can eliminate for the moment our three stupid authors. Also, this useless old idiot. The man who killed Duval, and I'm sure it was a man, had to come through those doors from the terrace to accomplish his purpose. So Mrs. Duval had a bad temper and she quarreled with her husband, is that right? I didn't say that. I never did see her and Mr. Duval together. Hmm. Then who did she quarrel with? Well, the most quarrel in what Miss Duval done was with her gentleman friend. Oh, so there was a gentleman friend, eh? There sure was. And how she loved that man. <sighs> Very interesting. How do you know that? Because I heard her say so when they was quarreling. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, by the way, what was this man's name? For the life of me, I don't know. Oh, come on now, Miss Ambrosia. This court wants you to try very, very hard to remember. Mrs. Duval must have called him by some name that you can think of. Oh, so you do remember? Yes, sir. What did she call him? Babykin. Babykin? That's it. Baby can. <laughs> you knew your father was mixed up in this Duval affair, and you came here tonight to protect him. Isn't that true? I'll not answer. And when you got here, you had to kill Duval to keep him from talking. Keep out of this. She could have killed him, and I'm not ready to believe she was strong enough to carry the body out of here. Women can do strange things when they get mad enough. Oh, I'm sure Miss Mallory isn't the sort of person that goes around killing people in my apartment. Well, we can soon prove that. This part's awful sad. Do you want me to cry a little while I exude? Little lady, just let yourself go. Well, what were they quarreling about? This man, Babykins, don't love Miss Duval no more. He say he go away. Well, what'd she do then? He say she gonna tell on it. Tell what? Tell who? Tell everybody. Uh, he say he gonna make her rich, then he took all her money and run out on her. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you heard the testimony? What did Babykin say to that? He just laughed in her face and started to go. And? That was in the kitchen. Miss Duval picked up the ice pick and said she's going to stab herself. Did she? <laughs> no, sir. That woman loved her gin too much to go around and commit herself suicide. Babykin just reach over her shoulder, take the ice pick away from her, and put it in his coat pocket. He said, I better take this long because you're liable to hurt yourself. And then he go away. That murder call tracer is listed in the name of Horace Dryden, 192 12th Street. 192? Homicide, 192 12th Street, and step on it. It's all very simple. We'll 
We'll walk over to the lounge, and if Miss Mallory is unable to lift the heavy object and carry it out of the doors, she necessarily is eliminated as a suspect. You agreed? Fair enough. Now, Miss Mallory. I killed Duval. Ambrosia, where were you when all this quarreling was going on? I was scrubbing the bathroom floor. They didn't pay me no mind. But you saw this man. Yes, sir. And he went away and never came back. Yes, he did, too. About three o'clock today. What happened today? They had the terriblest quarrel I ever had. He said he ain't gonna come back no more. She said she's gonna get even. She said she's gonna make him sorry that he run out on her. Ambrosia, you know what this is? Why, why, that's Miss Duval's ice pick. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I bought it for myself from the five and ten cent store. That's fine, Ambrosia, and you certainly are a swell actress. Are you telling me? Now, I'm going to take you in the other room. There'll be a lot of strange men in there. What I got to do? Well, you look at them real hard, and if you see babykins, you just point your finger at them and say, there he is. That's the big moment in the play. I say, there he is. That's right. Now, first, I'm going to blindfold you. Then I'm going to lead you in the other room. And I'll get all the boys lined up. And then I take off the bandage. And then I part my finger and say, there he is. Ambrosia, you certainly are the lily of the valley. Wait right here for just a minute. If you'll all give me your attention for a moment, I'll tell you who killed Duvall. Well, you're just a little bit late. We've already got a confession. Yeah, two confessions. Yeah, but I like the second one best. Here's your man, Mr. Robert Mallory. He didn't do what I tell you. He's just trying to shield me. Well, we'll see. Confessions aren't much good anyway. Proof is what you need, witnesses. I've got a witness that'll point out the murderer of Mr. and Mrs. Duval. Mrs. Duval? One and same person. Mr. Duval was Mrs. Duval. And vice versa. Well, it's all very confusing. I don't seem to understand. You don't have to. Huh? Now, I'll have nothing to do with this tomfoolery. You're right, Andy. Let the police take care Keep of it. Keep them lined up, babe. All right, let's tell everybody to stay right in here together now. And... All right, Ambrosia. Get ready to do your stuff. Now he is. Now, so always you. Grab him, babe. Don't be Mr. Milden. Now, if you all keep perfectly quiet, there'll be no trouble. I don't want any noise, and you don't need bullets in you. I'm sorry to deprive you of your little triumph, Mr. Milburn, but time is getting short, and I must bid you good night. Rehearsing again? How's it going, boys? Stop that man! A murder's been committed! These boys are always committing murder. That's the way they make their living. I'm helping them with one myself. What are you doing in my uniform? Why, well, you big mug, you let the murderer get away. Huh? Boys. What's happened here? There's been a murder, and you've already got your man. Where's the body? That's across the hall in the piano. Piano? Say, are you guys kidding me? No, no. This man's name is Dr. Randolph Brooks. Mrs. Duval, who lived across the way, was in love with him. When the good doctor ran out on her and became engaged to a young society girl, she threatened to tell the world about it. That would have ruined him, so he took the quickest way of shutting her up. Oh, one of those things, eh? What are you doing here, Harrigan? Well, well, you see, Inspector, I was walking along on my beat when I heard the shot. Uh, what shot? Officer Harrigan thought he heard a shot, but it turned out that she was murdered with an ice pick. Did you say the body's in there? Yeah, first piano to the left. Harrigan, keep your eye on these people. We find out what this is all about. Come on, you. Come on. Well, I'll keep you out of this. I'll say you were just visiting us. And you'll back that up or I'll show the police my little black book. Thanks, Nick. You've been awfully kind. I hope we'll meet again. Don't be silly. I've got your phone number. Good night. Good night. My screen! Never mind your screen. We've got the plot for our play. What plot? Our mystery play. Why, sure. Can't you see it, Horace? Drop right in our laps. Get the typewriter, Horace. Nick, this is a natural. Why won't Mr. Atherton be pleased? Mr. Atherton, what about us? Can't you see that opening night? The crowd's fighting to get in. The autograph seekers and the celebrities. Can't you see it? Yeah, now get on that typewriter, Horace, while we're hot. Now give out, Nick. Let's boy, go. oh boy. Page one. Um, the door opened and in walked a man. Yes, a little man in full evening dress. A gray beard covered his face. I don't see no man. Ambrosia, we're busy now. Don't bother us. Well, do I get my part, Mr. Nick? Sure, 
sure, if you can dance. I sure can. Dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum, da, da, dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 da, 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 da. Don't get too far. Oh, I guess you do, Ambrosia. Oh, and uh, on your way out, will you hang a sign on the door that says, Men Working? Yes, sir! 